Hey YouTube, so I'm going to be talking today about me applying to online college for Grand Canyon University, my experience so far, and where I'm at at the university, um, all that good stuff. Oh, my ear itching, sorry. Um, so let me just go ahead and get into the video. I don't want to make this a long video because me talking probably is going to be boring to you guys i just want you guys to know where i'm at right now in life so it's been a while since i have posted a video on youtube and it's a lot of stuff has happened in the past couple of months so yeah that'll be a different video i can catch everybody up on that so i, I first off let me get into a little bit of the backstory as to why I did apply to Grand Canyon University. So I work as a substitute teacher at my children's school and working there, I met one of the other subs and we got to know each other and she was telling me how she decided to go to school to be an early childhood educator. And she was just telling me how she was doing it online and da 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 all the extra. So it didn't cross my mind at first until another teacher, like a regular teacher that was working there as a SPED teacher, told me how she was going back to school to get her education online as well. She's going to a different school, but I was, and she was telling me how a lot of colleges, because of COVID now, they're doing to where you do it online. That's why I never really went to college. Well, after I had my daughter, I didn't want to go back to school. But I couldn't go back to school because I didn't have anybody to take care of her. Now, we have a college here in my small town where I could have did some of the schooling online or locally. But then I would have to drive an hour away every day and go to school. So there's no way I could go to school take care of my kids and go to work at the same time okay back to my gcu so she gave me the lady that contacted her and or she talked to about grand canyon so i said okay just tell her to hit me up or whatever on monday we'll go from there this is a friday the school office is not open on Friday, so she didn't call me on Friday. So she did call me on Monday morning, bright and early. She did call me, and we talked about it, and we went over the courses and the tuition and the grants and all this stuff and how much my education is going to be after, like what am I going to have to pay back. So, I'm like, there's no way I'm going to go to a college and I'm going to have $5,000 in student loans. So, let's go. So, I went on ahead and applied. Did my FAFSA. All of that. Good jazz. So, she told me that the first class was going to start on, let me go back, because February... 22nd. Yeah, that's when I started. Yep. Yes. February 22nd was the first time, was the start of my college. I mean, my classes, February 21st. Now, on the February 21st one, it was like, um, basically, it was explaining to you how do you log into your college classes how do you get into navigate your college classes um, um it was actually called navigating the online environment that's what it's called if you see me looking over it's because i'm looking at it right now now this course was it started on sorry it started february 22nd and it lasted till march 1st and then that's when i went into my regular um my regular classes um so week one week two not week one week two um no was it week one yeah week one is navigating the online classroom week two um 
basically the same thing. We're still trying to navigate through the classes and get um, used to the classes. Um, and then this one is called University um, University Success. This is where I'm at right now in the course called University Success. I just finished my week four. Now, mind you, we just got over COVID, so I'm a little ahead of everyone because I had time to just sit and do things. So I'm basically done with my week five stuff. All I have to do is go and post it and I have to make a video. But that's basically it. Um, so last week we had to do a purpose plan. Um, basically asking why, what's your purpose of being in the school? That's basically what it was. It won't let me go back. Oh, here. Okay. Yeah. Last week we had to do a purpose plan, annotated bibliography, and academic integrity worksheet. Now, mind you, these past few weeks have been pretty easy because we haven't had to do any essays or anything like that. All we had to do is basically they give us a template and we fill it out. That's basically all I've been doing for the past four weeks. So this week in week five, actually, I have to do basically the same thing. I'm trying to get out of week three. So in week five, um, this week I have to do a... I have to do a video of, on teaching dispositions and then I have to do my discussion boards explaining teaching dis dispositions and then I have a test and um, and I have to do a survey on what I think I would be how I think I would be when I do teaching des depositions and on that survey basically it's already filled out already and all I have to do is highlight what I think you know I'll be good at um so far things are doing good I have an A some of the things that they mark me off on it's kind of crazy because I'm like you couldn't give me that like it was literally one thing but I have to remember I'm in college now I'm not in high school so they're not going to just blow it off like I can tell you guys one of the things that they marked me off on I missed one post on the discussion board one post I made no is I made all of my posts but one of the posts weren't substantive enough I guess so I missed it Let's go into my purpose plan, which this was last week's assignment, and I turned it in. Um, the grade was 100, and I got a 98.5. So, I go back in, and I see his notes. He says, thank you, Takesha. Great job with your purpose plan. It is great to look in and have a plan to move forward. Blue, you applied rubric. Rubric. I cannot talk today. So, I go down on my rubric, and I'm like, where did he mark me off on? Because I have all the way 100, target, target, I hit the target. So, I go down, and this is where, this is the second time I didn't get the full point, because submission includes mechanical errors, but they, not, they do not hinder comprehension. That is the second time that has happened to me. Mind you, we have to submit our work to this thing called Lopes Right, where it checks all of our work and before we submit it to where it tells me if we have grammar, my grammar is wrong or wrong punct punctuations need to be put in. It tells me that and I always do it and I go back in and make them change the settings. And I'm just like, I feel like these people don't want to give me a hundred because there's no way there's no way I know I did that but I didn't get a hundred on it and it's okay because I still have an A in the class so I'm on week five right now we just started week five today and I already did so what I do is when I go ahead I have notebooks where this is where I take all my notes in my orange notebook which 
basically right now I have seven chapters in the university um, notebook in here of notes. I have the teaching disposition notes in here. And I'm almost out of paper, so I gotta go to Walmart tomorrow and get some more notebooks. I think I'm gonna need a binder and like just do it that way because I think it'd be easier for me to put all my notes where they belong. Now this notebook, my blue notebook, is where I do my assignments. I write them down. I do them before I put it into the um, computer. This is my topic number five. This is my questions for the video that we have to do on dispositions and I've already answered them on here so that all I have to do is start my video and then read the questions off and I'm done. I already did. Now I do have I hit something. I have another folder where I do all of my discussion boards in. Like I said, I am going to get a binder and separate all of that. Take it out, separate it, and do it that way. But, um, tuition for me, um, is $11,000 a year. Um, I did think about doing the teaching grant, but I read on that and it said that if I do not get a teaching position within the first four years after I get out of college, I have to pay that back. It's $6,000 a year. That's a lot of money to go towards that. But I'm just thinking like, what if I don't get a job in the first six years? Like, what if something happened and none of the places around here has a job for me? Or I'll have to move off and move away from my kids just to get a job. And that's what I'm thinking, like, what if it don't happen? And after I get this degree, I have to actually go and get certified for Louisiana. And I'm just thinking, like, how long is that going to take? Is it going to take me a year to do that? And then what if I don't pass it? Or, you know, that's what I'm just thinking. Like, that's a lot of money to be paying back on top of what I have to pay back for. The other loans that were, you know, I had to pay back. So it's eleven thousand a year. The maximum loan I can get is like fifty six thousand, and I don't want to do that. So I'm going to get. Like she told me, that what they're going to do is, each year, they're going to take the money that they need, and then they're going to give me whatever's left. I can either keep it. Or send it back to them and then they pit that towards my college. And if I do it that way, I'm going to owe about $20,000 after I graduate. Which is still a lot of money, but it's way cheaper than $56,000. And, um, yeah, that's what I'm just thinking. Like, my brother was like... I told my brother the wrong thing. I told him it was $11,000 a semester. He's like, whoa, that's a lot of money. But then I went back and looked at my stuff and I was like, oh, I told him the wrong thing. Because he went to Louis LSU and he said he has like $30,000, $40,000 in loans that he has to pay back. And I'm just like, yeah. And he's trying to quit. He was trying to quit. And I was like, you better stay. You might as well stay. You're almost done anyways. But, um, so far, so good. I just don't like how they grade things. Another thing, I did not know that this college was a Christian college, which is not a big deal for me. But I'm not really into the Bible. I don't know scriptures or none of that. And they, they post it on there a lot, so I'm learning a lot more scriptures. Um... But I just feel like, what if there's someone there who didn't know that this was a Christian college and they're going to this college and they have, like, different views on what other people post? And I'm just like, this is crazy. But, I mean, it is a diverse school. They accept everyone, if you're Christian, not Christian. They accept everyone's background, which is a good thing. Um, Because some places probably wouldn't accept you if you didn't. But that's a good thing. Oh, my head is itching. Sorry. So, 
after my seven weeks are up, I'll probably come back again and let you guys know if I'm going to stay in college or not. But I get days where I get unmotivated and I just don't want to do the schoolwork. And I've always been that way. And then I have to sit and think like, girl, you better do this crap. This is expensive. You're not about to sit here and do a little bit and then have to pay thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 for a college that you didn't even finish the first week. So that's where I'm just, I'm at right now. You know, I'm just like, mm, if I don't finish this, they're still going to charge me anyway, so I might as well finish it. <laughs> um, But I feel like if anyone decides that they want to go to this college, shoot for it. I mean, it might be on the pricier side. It is a private college, so. But like in my situation, I don't have any play. I don't have a way to go to a college and have someone watch my kids and be able to work. So this is the best for me in my situation. Not everyone has the same situation. And if you're just getting out of high school, go have some fun. Don't do no online college. Because sometimes I wish I would have went to college right out of high school and had some fun. But. I wouldn't change anything that I've done for whatever. I'm glad that I made the decisions that I made. And I'm glad that I'm making the decisions that I made now. So, you know, life happens. But um, that's the end of my GCU video. If you guys have any questions or would like to know my progress going forward, I will be posting more videos on GCU and my experience with the instructors and things. Oh, I do have another thing. So my counselor is a very bad communicator. Um, I can message her and I won't get a response back for like three or four days. And that's a big issue for me because I have questions and I feel like when I have questions and every time I call, I don't ever get her. I get somebody else. I never, I have never talked to my my counselor. I always get a different person. And that's a big issue for me. Because I'm like, I want to be able to get to know the people that is helping me out. And if I don't know them, like, what am I supposed to do? Like, go meet somebody else? Like, the lady that got me into college, I can message her and she'll message me back the same day. But my counselor, I can't get her for a few days or when I call her extension, I it puts me on a hold and then I get someone else. So I'm just like, what's the point of her being my counselor if she's not going to answer when I need her or have a question? Even a simple question. But whatever. But I will be back in a couple of weeks and I will give you guys an update on what's going on in my college journey if I decided to quit or stay. <laughs> Which I'm probably going to stay because it's expensive. But see you guys later.